So we've dealt with exponents with various powers, and now we're going to start combining them and see what they look like. So when we're doing that, we're talking about polynomials. If I'm adding or subtracting a combination of variables with different powers, it's a polynomial. So we're going to look at the most basic case and then build from there. So a monomial, the smallest polynomial that we can have, the smallest number of terms, is an expression of that type ax to the nth where a is a real number constant, so just something floating out on the front. And n, the power, is a non-negative integer. Non-negative integer. So we couldn't just say positive integer, because then that rules out zero. And we can have powers of zero in a polynomial then it's just a constant, and we don't have a variable that's involved. So non-negative, zero, anything positive. So a few examples, 2x to the third, 2y, negative 5, even though it doesn't have a variable on there, its exponent power is zero, it gets rid of the variable, still a polynomial. So a polynomial is a monomial, what we've just seen, or a combination of sums or differences of those monomials. So if I take a bunch of monomials, whatever they look like, combine them together by adding or subtracting, we look at polynomials. So I think it's helpful to look at a few non-examples, so things that are not polynomials. So anything with a negative power. So if I go ahead and put x plus 3, that is a polynomial, but if I divide it by x plus 4, now it's not, since we have powers down below. This whole chunk would have to have a negative power if we were going to put it up top. Or I could start with something that's a polynomial and add a term that is not a polynomial. So monomial, monomial, together these two make a polynomial, but when I'm adding this on the back, now it's not. Okay, some polynomials. Polynomials. We can make up whatever we want for these polynomials. I could have a monomial that looks like this. I could have a polynomial where I'm adding a few of those, throw a constant on the end. I just can't have any of my variables down below. Okay. We could even have it really huge. Five, seven, four, seven, six, whatever, to the tenth. Still a polynomial. Constant on the front, positive power positive power, zero power, that's fine. We could rewrite in here, one times x raised to the zeroth. And it still fits our definition of the polynomial. So we want to look at a few different cases and start evaluating polynomials when we're given a variable value. So the first one, evaluate these polynomials when x is equal to two. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to throw in a two. So, the first one, what are we looking at? 3 times 2 gives me 6, and then adding 5, I get 11. So, for that specific polynomial, when I plug in 2, I get out 11. All right, second one. We've dealt a lot with these cases, actually. These are all linear, it's a line, but now something that's not linear. At 2, what are we doing? So I've got 2 times 2 squared. Wherever I see an x, put parentheses around it so we don't make mistakes. 7 times 2, and I'm adding 3 on the back. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We have to go in that order. So in the parentheses, we can't simplify it all. So we want to look at exponents next. So 2 squared gives me 4. So I've got 2 times 4 minus 14 plus 3. Okay, we can start evaluating in the terms individually, as long as we're not adding and subtracting yet. And next, multiplication comes first. So we've got 8, taking away 14, adding 3. So moving left to right, what are we looking at? Negative 3, all together. Alright, so for that polynomial, at 2, when I plug in 2 for x, I get out negative 3. And I want to go ahead and throw a negative in there as well for our variable where we're evaluating, because that will make a huge difference. Parentheses are really important with polynomials. 
So let's go ahead and evaluate this first polynomial at negative 4. Wherever I see an x, I'm putting parentheses so I don't make a mistake. And what's going to come out of here? So I've got 2 and I'm subtracting off. We have to evaluate this power first. So negative raised to an odd power. Is it going to be positive or negative in the end? Just this term. Anything raised to the third or an odd power is going to be negative. And we can ask, 4 times 4, 16 times another 4, we're looking at 64. So, I'm subtracting a negative. What is that going to turn into? 2 plus 64, which is 66. And into the second one. When I evaluate this polynomial at negative 4, what are we looking at? So wherever I see an x, I'm putting parentheses. Wherever I see an x, I'm putting parentheses. So we've already evaluated negative 4, oh, cubed. We're looking at squared. It's going to make a difference. I've got a negative on the outside. I haven't taken care of that yet, so it still needs to stand. But what is negative 4 squared? So negative 4 times itself is going to be 16, positive. And I've got negative times negative, look at me, positive 12, and 1. So I've got negative 16, I'm adding 12 and 1. So negative 16, adding 13. I get negative 3. Okay, so it's very important with those parentheses. Parentheses matter, especially with the negatives. Because down here, our uh, evaluating negative 4 squared was positive 16. But if we add one more term, one more factor of negative 4, then it's negative. It makes a big difference. So be careful evaluating polynomials at negative values.